Here we go. Am I in the wrong one or something? I don't see. Oh, there you are. It didn't show them to me. That's weird. It didn't have the little, um, you know, at the top yeah. thing. Huh. Sorry. Never a dull moment in our history. There we go. All right. Hi, Jensen. Good to see you. Okay. Here we go. Maybe today. Oh, is it going to stay on the first slide? I can help. All right. Uh-oh, I have some people who are still chatting over here. Thank you. All right. Thinking about water, not just in our spot, but around the world. We're getting lots of good precipitation, obviously, but there we especially learned um, it last week with some of our with our guest speaker from Denver Water. Um, drought here and there is still an issue for people, right? So we're appreciating all that liquid gold that's coming down as rain and snow. All right, so we're gonna st we have several learning targets today, but we're gonna start with one. We're gonna focus on the first one, which is the one we were working on. Bless you. When we ended on bless you again. When we ended for Friday, and if you keep in mind that we have um, a, a we have a note catcher on page ninety six, and that note catcher reminds us that we have some steps before we actually get to the PSA, right? And right now we are doing number eight. We are planning our visuals for the PSA. So we're thinking about what kind of pictures do we need to go along with our speech? We wrote a script and the script is what we are going is is one of the things that we are going to look at when we decide what's going to go on our um, cartoons, right? So I asked you on Friday to take out your script and to look at it and divide it into the different slides and write some numbers next to it, depending on where you are on your slide, right, Mr. Paxton? So here we had an example. Here is on page, um, sorry, page 100 is your storyboard graphic organizer. We started this, you did not finish this, but we started this on Friday. And what we asked you to do is, so there's two boxes for each slide. So here's two boxes for the slide, two boxes for the slide and so on. The first box at the top tells you about from about zero to 10 seconds. So you need to find on your script about 10 seconds worth. And I say about, because it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, it could be nine seconds, it could be 11 seconds, it could be seven seconds, it could be 12 seconds. It's just about 10 seconds because your whole thing is about an, a minute, right? So about zero to 10 seconds, you are thinking, you are reading aloud and you're deciding, okay, this is what I'm, and you're writing on your own script and both people need to know what's gonna go be that 10 seconds. So you decide and you put a number by it. Now on your, on your um, EL spiral, it might be a little, you know, you might have to put a little mark, like here on number two. I'm doing number two, but I ran out of time, so we're only going to do it till about there. All right. So this to here, from this spot to this spot is two. And then from here to maybe here is number three. So mark it up however you need to to know which one, it, which slide it goes with. Then on your script, now that you know what the words are that go with that slide, think about what pictures you might need to go with that slide. So I was talking about appliances and light bulbs. So I drew an appliance and a light bulb. This is not, this is just a sketch. This is not an artistic endeavor. All right, you just want to get your ideas down. And in mine, it talks about different types of energy. So I just put a sun because that's part of what uh, the words are that go with this. It says the sun gives us two kinds of energy. So I drew a sun. Then on the bottom box, it asks who, what, and where. All right, so the who is who's going to be reading. So we said that you can take turns with your partner. So if Elena and I were doing this together, she might do this one, I might do this one and so on, we might alternate. 
It also could be that what we do, Elena does one, I do one, we do one together, that's both of us. All right, or we could do the whole thing together, or I could read a sentence, she reads a sentence on each one of the slides. It's however you want to do it, but you need to decide so that by the time you get to the Powtoons, there, the, this, the plan is already there. Then you also need to think about, okay, so well, the, the what? I'm going to be doing the intro, all right? I'm going to do the intro. I might want some music. I might want to picture a background of the earth besides all these other things, okay? So this is your chance to plan ahead a little bit. So my second one, here are my words that go with the second one. I talk about plants, I talk about water, I talk about wind. So I just kind of briefly wrote, drew some of those down. I'm gonna be doing this particular slide. It's going to be about the issue. I um, am going to perhaps stop the music. I'm gonna write some stats in there because somebody asked if we could have some writing, some text in there, you certainly can. You can write some text in there. Just like the ones that we watched, they you can have text as well. You can have, and the, we'll talk about effects and having think how show how you know they write those, you know, how you can use the you know effects to write something down, how you have things show up. Don't worry about that now. Just get the basics. Okay, so then you're gonna fill that out for all six slides. Um, obviously, this is going to be too long. We already know that this one's more like three minutes long. So I'm just showing you how you're going to break it up and decide what to draw or write and who's going to write. Um, remember, we have a beginning, a middle, and end. Intro, talking about the issue. So this one's probably about the issue again. This one is probably about the solutions. This one's probably about the solutions. This one might be the, and this one's going to be the conclusion, right? All right, so I have two about the issue, two about the solutions, and one about, one that wraps it up, right? Where we ask our friend, uh, our listeners to help us out and tell them how desperate we need their, their help. All right, so those are the basic ideas, but you're going to write more here, but don't, it's just a plan, right? We're not rewriting the whole thing. You already wrote your script, so you already have what the, the words are going to be that go with it. Yes? No. Three intros and three conclusions. You probably need some middle in there somewhere. It sounds like you have a beginning and an end, but you need some middle. So remember, just like we wrote our essay, how we told them about this, that we told them about the issue. We, we, we taught them some things about demand. We taught them about pollution. We taught them about access. And then we ask them to help us in some ways, right? Okay, so um, keeping that in mind, because those are the things we came up with, what is a, an effective PSA? So let's look at that again, because I think that'll help you, Mr. Noah. Here are our criteria for a, good, for a good PSA. High quality. Well, that we haven't got to that part yet, right? But that we're gonna, the more you can plan ahead, the easier this is gonna be. Describe the issue, right, Mr.? No, we got to describe it. We have to urge the viewer to take action. So we have to suggest ways they can take action with the solutions. And we have to keep it interesting so that they will want to remember it when it's done. All your ideas. Abby, did you have a question? Okay, so together when you're working today, you'll just have to, um, maybe she can start working on the graphic organizer while you're finishing your your script. Okay. Yes, Miss Bird. Uh, oh, just waiting. Oh no. Oh no. All right. So, and any other questions? Oh, got you. Got things going on. No worries. Um, any questions about what I'm asking you to do, Sunny? The plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not do, we're not touching Powtoons today. So you, so what you could do is if you you have everything divided here, you got everything drawn here. Maybe you're probably going to want to practice reading aloud. So one of the things that you're going to make sure that you're doing, I'm going to focus on this a little bit more when you're actually doing your Powtoons. You need to fluently read, right? And so that's what you and your partner could do is practice fluently reading it, time each up, time it, make sure that it's the right amount of time. Yes, Finn. Uh, 
Okay. Who is your partner? Cooper. I think Cooper's absent today, right, Mrs. Auburn? Yep. Yep. So no, you're going to have to proceed without him today. Mr. Lennox? Nope, he's not on Zoom. Okay, so do that. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Add some more sentences. That's a good idea. All right. So any more questions about what I'm asking of you? Now, this is not the whole amount of time. I ha we have other things we're going to do today. So I'm going to give you a big chunk, but I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be able to give you the entire time. Yes, Gabe. Nixon is not here today, I'm afraid. So you'll have to proceed a little bit without him. Yes. Miss Allie? Is Serenay here? Serenay? Yes. Yeah, she's just next door. She'll be over momentarily. All right. So she had to work without you on um, Friday. So she might have done some things. Yeah, she, did. Yeah, she worked uh, uh, without you. So you'll have to catch up with her for sure. All right. Any other questions? And my friends at home, um, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you in those breakout rooms to help each other. But really, um, you're, this is something you're working on independently. But I want you to be able to um, help each other out if you have some, if you need some ideas. So I will make sure that Ben, Haley, and Leo are together, and um, Gavin and Jensen are there for to support each other in case they need it. Uh, oh, and um, I got to find out, Mr. Ethan. I'm not sure which um, you chose, so I'll hold off on putting you in your breakout room quite yet, so I can figure that out. Okay, are you all ready? Got your materials out? You need to have it open to page 100. Page 100 is your graphic organizer. You need your pencil, you need your script. You need all of those materials to get started on this. All right, okay, get to it, my friends. I'm gonna go ahead and, oops. I'm gonna go ahead and put my friends in a breakout room, except for Mr. Let's see if I can talk to Mr. Ethan real quick. All right, let me create these really quick. So Ben, Leo, and Haley's not here right now because she's taking a map test, guys. So just help each other out best as possible. And Jensen and Gavin, I'm gonna have you. All right, Mr. Ethan, which, um, which subject are you going to do your pow tune on, Mr. Ethan? Do you want to do it on pollution? On um, pollution. You want to do it on pollution? Okay, so I'm going to have you go into room two as well. So you and Jensen and Gavin can help each other out. So we're filling out page 100 in your workbook. Okay, Ethan? Yep, page 100. Are they the same? Are they the same subject you are? Yeah, and they're the same here. Okay. Good. That, no, that's great, Ben. I like the initiative. Don't get silly, though. Don't get silly. Yes, sir. Where's your I have some extra timers if you need them. Hi guys. Um, I'm gonna go get Ethan and make sure he's in. He's not quite joined into there yet, so I'm gonna see what I can do here. All right. Hopefully he's on his way to this room. Ethan, go ahead and join that group if you want some help on how to fill out page 100, okay? Go ahead and join Gavin and um, Jensen. So if you want me to help you, you want to join another group that, could, uh, that you guys could kind of plan together, you're still going to have your own script and everything. So you'll have to plan that out. Um, you want, um, so you were doing which kind of thing? Demand. And you're the only demand group, right? We don't. Hey, you guys can get, hey, Lear, you guys, you're doing demand as well, right? Could you and Gabe kind of help each other out? Could you, my thing is, uh, so they can come on, you got to take your tip and come on over and help this out. Can I have a timer? Yes, you may. Great, but don't be silly. You guys have work to do. Okay. Can I have a timer? 
Yes, ma'am. Start, stop, reset.
Are you getting your page, um, page 100 filled out? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Great job. So what some of the kids also added, 
is in here the um, added intro, solution, um, issue, issue, solution, solution, conclusion, just to remind themselves of what section they were doing. You don't have to, but it's just an option if you wanted to, you know, write that in there. How's it going, Leo? Can I, yeah. see, can I see yours too? Ben showed me his. The camera. Oh, your script. How about page 100? How, have you filled out page 100 yet? I don't have my EL workbook. Oh, are you still in? Are you still on your trip? Yes, but yeah. we're leaving tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I kind of remember you. Were, that's okay. Are you planning that? If you're doing it in your notebook, that's fine, buddy. I, I, I appreciate your perseverance, even though you don't have your workbook. That's good. Mr. Ben, are you and Leo kind of helping each other out? Getting yeah. Started? Yeah? Okay. All right. I'm going to give about probably about five more minutes, maybe. Is that good? Do you guys, can you still work for another five minutes? Yes. Is too much? Yeah. Or not enough? What do you think, Lee? Is that about right? If I give you about five more minutes, Ben? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll see you in about five then. Hi guys. Hi. Hey, Mr. Jensen, can I see what uh, your page 100 looks like? Yeah. All right. Oh, you got to draw some pictures in there for me, buddy. It looks like you have a good start. Try to draw some pictures, like about what's okay. your, about your um, thing. Mr. Gavin, where'd you go? <laughs> Hey, can I look at your page 100? I can't find my book again. Oh, blah, blah. Um, you really should have. Yeah, that's what we're working on is page 100. Find that workbook. Yes, ma'am. Go click those with your partner. Oh, no. So, Mr. Johnson, you should be drawing your pictures right now. Put that down and draw in some pictures. I want to see some added things. So, think about what. So Jensen, when you were thinking about what goes on slide one, when you decided to divide up your script, read to me, read to me what is going to go on um, your first slide. Can you read on your script okay. go on your first slide? This is what is going to go on my first slide. Water is so important to us, but there is pollution and there's a way to stop it. Okay, so um, what picture, what what items could you put on the Powtoon to go along with those sentences? Hmm. You put a stop sign for ways to stop that, please. You could put a stop sign on there. Maybe that. I could make a person drinking water. Okay, good. So. so that right on the on page 100 under the one okay make a stick figure so you can just draw a little stick person drinking some water the reason i'm drawing a stick person is because that other ones just take too long that's fine. So it's just, I really just want to see sketches on all those top boxes, okay? Is that a good sketch just right there? There you go. Oh, little, is that his little hand with the water? <laughs> yeah. Cute. Okay, what else could you draw? What else could go on that slide? I could probably do your idea, like a stop sign. Okay. So you don't have to. I just was trying to get, you know, some of the things that I heard you say. So that's what I need you to do. I need you to sketch those last three things. I'm going to give you about um, about five more minutes or so. So I want to see all those. I want to see all those little pictures finished. Okay, Gavin, I need you to find that page 100 and get that work on. Okay, bud. Mr. Ethan. All right, thanks, Gavin. I'm going to ask to see him, buddy. Yep. Remember, start, yeah. start. Yeah. 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 
I do what you say. All right. Oh, right. You're an expert. All right. You know, draw like a pond with trash in it. That would be an excellent idea. Yeah. And then, then read your sentence for number two, for slide two, or your sentence for slide two, and then do the same thing. Draw some more, um, you know, ideas to go with it. All right, I'm going to leave the room. I need you to keep working, though. Okay, Mr. Jensen? Okay. All right, Mr. Gavin?
You're, You're muted. muted. Thank you, Jensen. All right, so learning targets. Okay, fist at five. I know that not everybody finished, but five being finished. Let me see. I hear somebody's hi now. Thank you. Um, five if you're finished. Zero if you haven't started, which is no one. So no one should be there. Give me a, all right. So I've got all right, mostly fours and fives, a couple threes and a couple lower than that. Okay, so when it comes to actually working on the plow tunes, some of you are going to have to fill in as you go um, and just have to um, figure things out as, as you're moving along. All right, <laughs> Mrs. Aubin trying to figure out the quest for the, the <laughs> timer that is done. All right, we are going to do three more learning targets. We probably won't finish all three of them, but we will get as far as we can. First learning target that we're going to work on is I can use abstract nouns. So we're going to talk about what an abstract noun is. We are going to plan our invitational letter for our PSA. And we are going to um, review what it is like to write an address using commas and capital letters. So we probably won't get to all of that, but we're gonna see how much we can get done for sure. So our first one using abstract nouns. So um, we're, we're gonna talk about what an abstract noun is in a moment, but at first we're gonna to get to, because the abstract nouns are in my example of an invitational letter. So let's look at that word, invitational. What word? Do you see a root word that you see inside of invitational? Lennox? Invitation. Very good. And what's even inside invita invitation? There's even a word inside that. Cole? Invite. Invite. Very good. So what do you think our letter is going to be about? If it's an invitational letter, what do you think if it's got the word invite in it? Moran, what do you think? It's going to, we are going to write a letter inviting someone to watch our video PSA Zoom, all right? So we are going to fill out and we're going to come up with a letter that invites people to come to our Zoom because we can't, they can't, can't come in person, right? Our invitation will, that their example has people coming to the actual school. We can't have people come to the actual school, but we're going to do what, what we did for um, our frog books and invite them to a Zoom so that everybody can come. So all of our remote friends can be here, all of our adult, um, whether our parents are at work or wherever, if they can Zoom in during that time, they can also watch it. Grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles. We were talking about Noah's uncle lives down in the city. Some of this stuff might be really important for him, right? So he might choose to invite him. So that's our invitational letter. So they have an example. And so it is in your workbook. So go ahead and open your workbook to page 101. Yep, Paxton knew it, page 101. You, I know you should have it open already, right? Because it was page 100 we were doing. So if we take a look at this, we have some different sections to this letter. And we are going to end up planning ours in a similar way to this example. And I tell you, it's kind of funny because this letter is to Mrs. Harrison. And um, this is actually the books. This isn't to me. I mean, they, that just was a coincidence. It didn't happen to be just to Mrs. Harrison because I teach EL. That was purely an accident. All right. But look at the top. What do you notice here is at the top, the very top. Now look, you can see Alex James and you can see his name is also at the bottom. So what do you think this top portion is for? Lila M? I think it's for knowing who is John and Alex and uh, Okay, so we have, when we have a letter, we expect that maybe somebody will write us back. Right. And so even so no matter whether it's an in, so if it's an informal letter to your grandma, 
you probably don't need the return address because grandma already knows where you live, right? But um, in our, in our, for our practice letter, we are going to assume that maybe the person you're sending it to does not know your exact address and might want to write you back at some point. So you start with your name and then the place that you are sending it from and the date you are writing it, um, you know, the date you're writing the letter, all right? So why would you include a date, do you think? Why would that be important, Abby? Why would you include a date to the top of a letter? All right, the, the date here of when we write it. Um, so it's nice when people, especially when people look back at letters to know what was, when that was, what was going on at that time, what year it was, because they might keep this letter for later. It also, sometimes the mail, I have sent things in the past in the mail that didn't arrive. In fact, Mrs. Obbins heard this story. I sent a Christmas card with a gift card in it to my friend, son, my friend's sons that live in Washington. And I ended it, it didn't make it to its destination and it came all the way back to me, but it took two months for that to happen. And it was way after Christmas by the time I got it back. And then I sent another one and boy, it was crazy. But it's important that you say when you sent it so that you're, the person who's receiving it kind of has an idea of when you wrote it so they know how long it took to get there. All right, and then we have what we, it's a, it's a salutation, it's Dear Mrs. Harrison, to whom we are writing to. So um, we are practicing in class writing, we wrote some thank you notes, and we wrote dear and to who it was to, right? And so that tells us who our letter's for. The next part, did you know that there are two types of energy sources, renewable and non-renewable? Ooh, what does that sound like? What does that sound like? Ellie? Um, well, does it, so uh, the word renewable, but think about what that sentence sounds like from our essay or from our pattern script. What do you think, Finn? It's from the uh, energy. It's from the energy. So this one is, is about the energy zoom. So what part of our essay do you think that question came from, Lila? The intro. The intro. So you start with an intro, a hooking question, right? Even this would be easy. You guys are getting so good at these now. You've got them in your script. You've got them in your um, essays. It should be easy, right? Did you know that there are two types of energy sources, renewable and non-renewable? There is a limit to non-renewable energy sources like oil, coal, natural gas, and atomic energy. These sources can be all used up which is a serious problem for any from ev for everyone. What does that sound like in our in our sections, Cole? That sounds like our problem or our issue, right? So you're going to tell them a little bit about your problem, a little bit about the issue. Then it says, please come and learn more about this important issue on Friday, December fifth, at three thirty p.m at Treetops Elementary School, Dark Forest in the gymnasium. Now, will our letter have a place that they're coming to? No, but will it have a time? Yes. yes. Will it have a date? Yeah. Yes. And they'll, we'll have to tell them it's going to be on Zoom, right? So this is the part right here that tells them when to come and how, right? All right. In my presentation about non-renewable energy, I will describe some of the effects of using too much of the energy resources and some things we can do to prevent it. Does that sound like solutions? Ah, you guys see how this is working out again? Other students will also be presenting on energy issues. So we're telling them it's not all about just one. But are you going to have several people on your Zoom? Yes, we're going to put you in Zoom groups. And so you won't just be showing, you won't be in a Zoom just with your people. You'll have a couple of different how-tos within your, so you'll have some small groups like you did with the frogs, right? So you'll have, you can include the other, you're telling them what to expect, right? What to expect on the Zoom. It is with pride and excitement that I invite you to join me on this mission to contribute to a better world. I look forward to seeing you 
there. What part of the letter does that sound like? Conclusion, I heard that. It's a little conclusion, right? You're trying to get them to come. All right. And then we have our closing. So, so depending on who you're writing it to, right? You might write love or sincerely or with warm, if it's somebody you don't know as well, you might say your friend or warm regards. It's our closing. This is our closing right here. And then we have our signature or our signing of who, who has sent the letter. So this name should match the name at the top, right? That should be the same person, right? Because if they were sending you back a letter, this would be the address and that you'd be sending it to. All right, so that's all the parts of an invitational letter. You will be writing a letter tomorrow and Wednesday to someone. So we are today we're not we're 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 gonna leave open the idea of who you think you might invite. Now you definitely can write it to your parents. However, don't, aren't your parents most likely going to already know, you're gonna be able to invite them easily anyway, right? So could your letter be to someone slightly different? Somebody else, like an aunt or an uncle? Because remember, what are we trying to do? We are trying to share our, our knowledge with other people, right? And so keep in mind that we are, um, you're, we're trying to make a, the world a better place, right? We're, our ethical people, we are taking our learning and we are making our learning for a better place. So think about who else could you share this information with? Yes, Evie. Um, like yes, somebody who's totally, um, who, who, is, who wouldn't necessarily be hooked in with our Zooms, right? So I'm gonna let you choose, uh, but I would suggest that if you could pick somebody else that you think would likely be able to come, that you could get the letter to, um, either um, you know maybe mom and dad could send it to them, kind of idea, or we could make it. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a um, you're going to write it today and tomorrow, not today, sorry, tomorrow and Wednesday. Mrs. Harrison and Mrs. Aubin are going to make copies of them so that because we are going to take a grade for them for for writing. But then you'll get the right the letter back so that you can either send it or take it or give it to whomever it is that you wish to give that letter to. And if you want to email it kind of thing, you can we can scan, you know, there's all these other ways you could do it, right? You could scan it and send it to that email it to somebody. Yes, Miss Isabella. So you um will if you have time for sure. Um, I'm not sure, Miss Isabella, you're going to end up with as much time as uh, that, that's possible. But I'm. But um, what you could also do is we could write one, make some copies, and then you could fill in your dear part um, to a couple different people. That would be a possibility. Yes, Astria. Yes, I have my, um, so we are going to do people because we're trying to make the world a better place. Maybe your dog can do, can watch it with. Um, your dad, maybe, maybe your dad can, you know, can, can share that idea with your, okay. yes, Eddie. Um, so, yes, definitely, because it's Zoom, right? So if it's somebody who can access our Zoom link, then that would be a possibility for sure. Paxton. I have a question. Yes. So will the Zoom be recorded? We do. Um, so the only problem is, is yes, we do record the Zoom, but when you go out into the breakout rooms, which we're going to do, it doesn't record the breakout rooms. But what can happen, and I know some people did from the, the frog one, is if you're, say your mom came, your mom could um, like take, take your phone and record the Zoom and then she'd have it. That would be the only way, because unfortunately it doesn't record, like it records my Zoom now because we're all together, but when we're in breakout rooms, it doesn't record what's going on in each of the rooms. So that's a good question, good question. Madison. Um, can you, can you email, can you, you certainly can, but we're gonna write the invitational letter and then you can maybe follow off that to, to do write your text for sure. 
Okay, so I, I need to move on, but I, I see that you've got some more questions. So I'm gonna try to catch those for sure. Um, I'm just looking at the time um, and trying to think of. So one of the things that we want to talk about today is abstract nouns. Well, first, what is the word, what's a noun? What's a noun? Everybody's hand should be up, really. Come on, friends. What is a noun? A person, place, or thing. Thank you, Ben. A person, place, or thing, or idea. And that's actually what an abstract noun is. It's something that we can't touch or see, but it is something that is, um, but is still a noun. It's a concept. So let's look at, look at this. Looking at working at becoming ethical people. Respect. Respect is a noun. But can we touch it? No. Can we hand it over? Can we turn it in at the end of the day? No. It's an abstract noun. It's an idea. It's a concept. It's a, some, it is a thing, but it's not something that we can touch. How about integrity? Doing something when you know that it's, that even when it's, you know, hard, you do it anyway. That is a noun. Yes, integrity is a noun. It is an idea. It's a concept. It's when we do something, even when it's difficult. Sometimes, you, sometimes some of you hate apologizing, right? Some of you are not, you know, like when you when we ask you to apologize, you're like, no, I don't want. That's integrity, right? Doing something even though it's hard to do. That is an abstract noun. Empathy. When we feel for other people, that's a noun. That the idea of having empathy is a noun. Compassion, when we actually do something, when you see something that needs to be done and you, you, you see somebody and you think, ah, uh, Serena is having a really rough um, morning this morning. What can I do to help her out? That's compassion. You're noticing that somebody else needs something and you're filling that need. The word compassion is a noun. It's a concept. It's something you can't touch you can't see, but you can, you know, you can't really feel it. Like that's something that I can hand over, but it's definitely a, an abstract noun. So let's look right here at this. You're going to need an abstract noun in your letter. And that's one of the things they're going to require you to have in your letter. So look at this sentence here. It is with pride and excitement that I invite you to join me on this mission to contribute to a better world. I look forward to seeing you there. Does anybody see an abstract noun in that sentence? There's actually quite a few of them. Hmm, Haley. Excitement. Excitement. Excitement is a noun. It is some it's a concept. But can we touch it? No. No. It's, you can kind of feel it, but is it something that you can hand in at the end of the day? No. no, is it? The, it's not something that we can we can physically touch. But excitement is an abstract noun. Logan, what's another one? Pride. Can you feel pride? No. Yeah. Oh wait. Yes. yes, you can feel pride, but can you touch it? No. no. Can you again? Can you um, find it out on the on the ground outside? No. no. Pride is an abstract noun. It's something, it's a concept, right? It's to feel good about something somebody's accomplished is pride. How about mission? A mission. It is our mission to contribute to a better world. Is that an abstract noun? Yeah. Yes. Again, it's a concept. It's something that we want to do together, but is it something we can hold? No. Um, even in this case, better world. Is in this case, world, necessarily something that we can touch it we can't touch the world we can touch you know around us but it can we but our better world that we're making is that something necessarily we can touch no. no so we have a lot of abstract nouns in there and we're going to talk about that tomorrow because when we're writing our letters we're going to need an abstract noun to go in there Gabe say it again forward, forward. well so forward is a direction I see what you mean. So forward is actually an adverb in this case. Good try though. Adverb is telling us where we are looking. So that was a good try. Good try though. Very good. All right. So that is all of our, um, that's all of our abstract nouns that are in that sentence for the moment. So thank you. Um, all right. So I'm looking at my time. Um, everybody just for the moment, turn the page to 102. 
we're not going to get much of this written down, but I think I can sneak in a couple of things, I bet. But I can sneak in a couple of things. So, of course. All right. So, name and address of sender. So, who is sending this? Your name. So, your name should go right here. Oh, you can't. Sorry. All right. You, I bet we can get your name in here. Don't write your name, write your actual name. So I would write Lori Harrison. August is going to write August Weber. Gabe is going to write Gabe Levine. Everybody write in your name. At least get that started. Last name too. This is an official invitational letter. We need a first and our last name. So we are not going to send your address. We are not, um, because a variety of you may be sending some letters to people who maybe you don't know super well. So we are going to, yes, Mr. Tenner. Um, so we have two weeks, buddy. It's not until the 24th. So it's very possible if we, because we're going to have this done by, by before the end of the week that you could definitely send it. All right, your name. So we're going to do one more thing before we're done. We're going to write West Jeff Elementary School. So we'll, uh, right underneath, West. And does West need a capital? Yes, why? It is the name of our school, Mr. Mr. Robert, can you read well enough from back there? Yeah. Jeff, two F, F, Erson, West Jefferson, what? Elementary. elementary school. Does elementary need a capital E? Yeah. Yes, because it's so. And what else? School. Capital. S. Part of our name. All right. Is it pretty important that you spell that correctly? Yes. yes. You know why? This is our only our plan, but if you're going to use this later in your real letter, it would be best if you spell it correctly in the plan because it makes it easier to spell when you're doing your, your real one. All right. So tomorrow we will complete this plan. And then we will talk, then you will start writing your own, well, from the plan, you'll start writing your own letter. And we'll finish them up on Wednesday and hopefully get them out by the end of the week. All right, so what should, whoa, 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 whoa. So what I would like you everybody to do, especially those of you at home as, as well as here, think about who, because we didn't write who. We didn't write the guest name yet, did we? So think about between today and tomorrow who your guest to our zoom is going to be all right so think about who you want to send your letter to okay all right my friends um we're gonna let you go and we'll see you at 12 45 on mrs aubin zoom